Bienvenidos a Encuentros del Futuro. Hoy tenemos la segunda de nuestras entrevistas con uno de los científicos e intelectuales más relevantes del mundo de la actualidad, Richard Dawkins. Mr. Dawkins, thank you for being here with us. Let's talk about atheism. Um, you said that faith is one of the world's great evils. Why? Well, faith encourages people to do things without reason. So usually you should base your decisions upon evidence, you should base your beliefs upon evidence, and your, dis your decision should be based up upon evidence to a prediction of likely outcomes. Faith says you must believe this, whether, it, whether you've got any evidence for it or not. Indeed, you are appraised, you're encouraged to believe things for which there is no evidence. When uh, doubting Thomas, St. St. Thomas, was worried, did, did, didn't believe that Jesus had risen from the dead and he wanted to actually touch him. And Jesus said, Thomas, uh, because thou hast seen, thou, 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 thou believes. And then he said, more virtuous are those who believe without seeing. That's a terrible motto. St. Thomas should be regarded as the patron saint of scientists. Mm -hmm. You must only believe what there is evidence for. And faith can be truly pernicious if the beliefs that you, you hold without evidence lead you to do fanatical, dangerous things like killing people, bombing people, suicide bombs, and so on. And we see this in the world today, um, reported in the news all the time, because of faith. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that there is a space in human experience for um, kind of experience things that are not related with evidence, with no, rationality? because it's always, always based on evidence. I mean, it may be very subtle evidence. You want, and the examples one often hears about is, you know, how, how do you know your wife loves you? Well, you have evidence. The evidence may not be scientifically um, experimental evidence or something like that, it's nothing like that. But, but you have evidence from little catches in the voice, little looks in the eye, little touches. Everything in your everyday experience makes you know your wife loves you, your husband loves you, uh, and this is evidence. It's not something other than evidence. By, by something other than evidence, I would mean something supernatural, uh, and that's what real faith, religious faith, is. It's belief in something that's absolutely no evidence for whatsoever. Did you propose a militant atheism? Uh, it's not sufficient to say, okay, some people have faith, some haven't, everybody is entitled to its own belief and end of the story? Well, everybody is entitled to their own beliefs, you can say that, but they're not entitled to their own facts. F fa facts are in independent of what, mm -hmm. of what people want to believe. And um, this, this tolerant attitude that everybody should believe what they, what they want becomes dangerous when it, when they actually leads to suicide bombing and, and that kind of thing, which, is, which happens not all the time, but it happens sufficiently often. Only if only the extreme fanatics actually do it, but the non-extreme ones, the who are not fanatical, they've all been brought up to to believe that faith is uh, is a, is a, is a, a virtue. The other thing I feel is that feeding children with nonsense is depriving them of the opportunity to know how wonderful the true facts are. Scientific knowledge is a wonderful gift to give a child. And to feed a child with superstitious nonsense is, uh, I think, a form of child abuse, really. There are still some aspects of the, of the universe that science can explain. Uh, at least until today, uh, how everything starts, for example. Is there still a space there for other kind of explanation or at least for rational agnosticism? Well, we have to be agnostic about things that we don't have evidence mm -hmm. for, of course. And, and as you say, there are things that, that, that we don't yet understand. Science doesn't yet understand uh, the origin of the laws of physics, for example. Um, but it's an extraordinarily illogical step to say, Therefore, because science doesn't understand it, therefore religion does. I mean, <laughs> nobody understands it. And if science can't, it can't explain something, then you could bet your life religion can't explain it either. Mm -hmm. uh, you will say, uh, as Robert Persick said that, uh, uh, and I will, I will co quote him, uh, when one person suffers from a delusion, it's called insanity. When many people suffer from a delusion, it's called religion? Yes, <laughs> it's a good point. Um, there are people in lunatic asylums who think they're Napoleon and, 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 and um, think they're God, and, and, and we, we call them lunatics. Um, but as he said, it, when, when, when millions of people believe a similar delusion, it's called a religion and they're supposed to respect it. Mm -hmm. um, the vast majority of the world population 
is suffering evolution? It is, and but, but de decreasing actually. I mean, I mean, if if, if you look in places where education is better, and pro especially where, where prosperity is better, mm -hmm. where people are less deprived, um, Western Europe, Northern Europe, um, and actually even the United States of America, which is notoriously infested with mm -hmm. religion, is coming down, and especially among younger people. But if religion is just, just a kind of delusion, why has every known successful human society in history had a religion? Well, it, it is, that's undoubtedly true, and, and um, um, it, it's, partly a psychological question. Why, why is it psychologically reassuring to people to believe something supernatural? Um, when you're faced with great mystery and, you, and you're fa faced with um, the, the complexity of living things and you, you know that human machines are designed by engineers, mm -hmm. it's tempting to think, oh, well, the eye must be designed by a divine engineer. Also, there's things like fear of death, um, bereavement, hoping to, to meet your loved ones again after they've died, this kind of thing. So there's a great emotional uh, satisfaction, comfort, consolation to be gained from religious belief. Um, I think for, as an evolutionist, I've often said that I, I believe that religious belief and the widespread adoption of religious belief is a byproduct of something else in psychology. For example, a byproduct of uh, the um, the genuine biological value of, of things like obeying authority, mm -hmm. especially in a child. It's, it's important for children to survive. It's important for them to obey their parents and to believe what their parents tell them about the dangers that beset them, because there are such dangers. Um, and that can carry over. If the child brain is pre-designed by the genes with the rule of thumb, believe whatever your parents tell you, mm -hmm then that's going to come into force even if what your parents tell you is nonsense. Because the child brain, by definition, has no way of distinguishing the good advice, like don't pick up snakes, from bad advice, or at least time-waste silly advice, like you have to pray five times facing east. Does not uh, modern morality, Western morality, Western civilization morality, came from the Bible? No, I hope not, anyway. If you, if you read, anybody who's, who says that and never read, read the Bible, um, especially the Old Testament, the, the Bible is an appalling manif manifesto for immorality. But the New Testament has some very positive moral rules. It has of the Sermon behavior. on the Mount. That's about it. Uh -huh. um, yes. Um, blessed are the meek, um, etc. That's nice. Um, but actually, the central message of the New Testament, which is really de derived from St. Paul rather than from Jesus, um, the central message of the New Testament is that humans are all born in sin. They love this word sin. Mm -hmm. We're all born in sin. The only way to redeem yourself from sin is because of the blood of Jesus. Jesus had to die. God sent his own son in order to be executed and tortured for our sins. What a horrible idea. What a disgusting idea. And that's the, the central idea of Christian, Christianity, for which, as I said, Jesus himself is not to blame. Paul is to blame for that. Mm -hmm. Probably Paul Christian is, will say the central idea of the New Testament is love. That, well, you can, you can say that. I mean, that's what, that's, what, that's what Jesus would say. And as I say, I mean, G Jesus was a good man. Paul was not a good man. And, and Christianity was founded by Paul. And we have the legacy of Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we agree that religion is a delusion, as you, as you say. Can we say also that maybe that delusion has some positive effects for societies? I doubt it. I mean, it, 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 it might have, uh, but they would be rather incidental. I mean, we, can, we can do our moral philosophy without religion. We can, we can work out, we can sit down together and work out what would be the best kind of society to live in. And we could disagree about it, but, we, but our criteria would be, would be mm -hmm statable cri criteria about, about welfare, about reducing suffering and that, that kind of thing. It would not be because a holy book says. Mm -hmm. Because the people who wrote the holy book, they wrote it 2,000 years ago, whatever it was, um, and they didn't know as much as we do. Mm -hmm. Why should we believe them? Yeah, but I, I, was, I was thinking more about co cohesion, like let me quote Durkheim, religions create cohesive groups that can function as organisms. Well, that's rather a rather unevolutionary view, but, mm -hmm. but um, if they, yes, they can. And um, um, uh, Yuval Harari has made this, this point. Other, yeah. others, others have made the point that, that, that religions provide a kind of social focus. 
um, which can be for good or can be bad. I mean, it can, it can lead to this kind of social fo focus that shows itself in loyalty to your country in war, for example, mm -hmm. something like the First World War, which is, everybody agrees is the most ridiculous disaster, was fostered by social cohesion, the idea that we are British and we are best, or we are Germans and we are best. Um, so social cohesion is a mixed blessing, and there are probably better ways of getting the good parts of it than religion. Mm -hmm. um, but we have not any evidence of a society without religion that does like, last in the long term. No, we haven't. Um, we, the, the nearest approach would be in modern Scandinavia, mm -hmm. I suppose, and um, th these are, these are c countries where there is prosperity, where there's um, a great deal of social welfare, there's good education, there's good medical services. Um, I mean, a, a, a world that, it, that imitated Scandinavia would be a pretty good world to live in. Yeah. The question is that it could lo uh, stand a long time, this kind of society. We, we still don't know. As you say, we have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Vamos a hacer una pequeña pausa y volvemos conversando con Richard Dawkins en Encuentros del Futuro. We humans are social animals. Tenemos la base de datos más grande que jamás se haya tenido sobre comportamiento humano. Necesitamos de nuevos paradigmas, de nuevas formas de hacer las cosas con procesos cada vez más participativos. We should know that if we do want to make the world a better place, we need to take a look at ourselves and make a change. On Richard Dawkins. Uh, Mr. Dawkins, can't religion uh, be in some moments or in some aspects a good thing for some societies? I think it's had good effects mostly. I, I would think most of the good effects are artistic. I mean, mm -hmm. superb works of art, paintings, music, um, great architecture. It's hard to think of anything else. Let me give you a Chilean example. Uh, during Pinochet dictatorship, the Catholic Church was a sanctuary for many people. Uh, many lives were saved because of the power of the institution. Pinochet can shut down the Congress, can shut down the independent media, but not the Catholic Church. So they have a positive role in this, this moment. Yes, because they were a powerful institution and uh, historically the Catholic Church was important and so Pinochet didn't dare perhaps to to interfere and, and mm -hmm. people could take sanctuary. So this is a rather incidental byproduct and, and it, th this could have been any powerful institution. It happened to be a religious institution. Mm -hmm. um, now, today, the Catholic Church in Chile, not only in Chile, is, is, is having a, a very difficult time because of the cases of sexual abuse. What do you think about it? Well, that's, I mean, that's one reason why it's having a difficult time. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, s I would be glad to see the death of the Catholic Church. So I mean, I'm glad to see it declining in Ireland. I'm glad to see it declining in Chile. Um, and uh, I, I it, we, but for completely different reasons. I mean, because, because it's fostering untruths, uh, which are, which have, um, which conflict with scientific truth. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yes, you're, you're right, of course, that the Catholic Church is suffering gravely from the um, horrible practices of child abuse, uh, which seem to pre prevail in it. Should religious education be prohibited? No, I think it's important that children should, re should learn about religion because it's impossible to understand history without mm -hmm. understanding the religious motivation of so much that went on in history in wars and other things. Um, it's important to uh, know the Bible, uh, because of literary references so much. Enormous, and I presume it's the same in Spanish, in English, huge numbers of um, figures of speech, uh, similes, metaphors, um, come directly from the Bible. You would be illiterate if you didn't know the Bible, just as you're illiterate if you don't know uh, great authors of the past like Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I was thinking more about the the education in a, in a Catholic uh, school, for example. Pernicious and, and definitely should be stopped. I mean, that, that t t teaching a child, you belong to this religion, mm -hmm. you are a Catholic child, that is p 
pernicious. That is actually child abuse. Mm -hmm. But teaching a child, there is such a thing as Christianity. Some people believe this, some people believe that. There are Catholics, there are Protestants, there are Muslims, there are Jews. Mm -hmm. that, that would be important to teach children, but do not teach a child. You are a Catholic child, you are a Protestant child. That's evil. When you say that you would like to see the death of the, of the Catholic Church, uh, for many people, the Catholic Church, or the churches in, in, in general, are also a way to tie with another individuals, are a, are a social way to have uh, significant relations with the neighbors. Yes, I mean, I mean, there are surely better ways to, to do it than subscribing to a lot of cosmic falsehoods. Mm -hmm. But don't you think that religion has at all a social benefit? In, it probably in does, but that's an incidental thing. And the important thing is, is it true? And it isn't true. Mm -hmm. But a thing is not necessarily be truth to have, a, uh, to have an effect in, in no, society. Okay. If, you, if you care about that, good luck to you. I mean, I, I care about truth. Uh -huh. But do, do, don't you care about how societies like, develop? How yes, people I, mean, I, mean, I think, I think there are better ways to do it than to encourage belief in untruths. You can have social clubs, you can believe in, you can join political movements, you can go to concerts and lectures and theaters and, and, and drinking clubs. There are all sorts of ways of fostering social mm -hmm. co cohesion, supporting football clubs. There are all sorts of things that, mm -hmm. that, 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 you, that unite people that don't go along with believing in falsehoods about the universe and life. We can say that you want a post-religious world. Do you think it will, it will, be, be, it will be, be, be better? Yes, it, I think it would be better, and, and I think it, it, it may be a long time coming. Mm -hmm. and, you th and do you think, as a scientist now, that uh, it will happen, that, that mankind will go to a post-religious world? Well, as I say, I, I think eventually, but I think it'll take a long time. We need a lot more education. Uh, there's very good evidence that um, uh, countries where there is a, a good social welfare um, provision and good education are the least religious countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And that shows itself too in the states within the United States of, of, of America. Mm -hmm. um, religion tends to go with poverty and deprivation and lack of education. And so as those things we hope change, then religion will decline. Do you think that also religion is um, relevant in violence? Well, obviously, in places like Syria and the Middle East, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not the violence about the holy unknown necessary about religion. I mean, the holy could be things different. Yes, so different well, of, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier of social cohesion. Mm -hmm. One of the consequences of, re of religion is, so, is, is identifi identifying yourself with a particular group. So, for example, in Northern Ireland, um, when Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland kill each other. They're not actually doing it because of a dispute over theology. They're doing it because this is our group, and that's their group. We are the orange, they are the green. Mm -hmm. um, I'm avenging the death of my, f of my grandfather, mm -hmm. who was killed by, uh, by a Catholic or by, uh, by a Protestant. This is the downside, the negative side of the social cohesion that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's the primary motivation, probably, of what I'm calling religious inspired violence, but it's not inspired directly by theological dif disagreements. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that the people use labels to identify who the enemy is and who, the, who their own friend, friend group is. And religion is a very powerful um, identification label because of the social cohesion effect, which you mentioned earlier. Yeah, but the worst genocide in history were not acting in the name of religion. Stalin was acting well, in the name of the Well, that depends what you call religion. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're any, any, any fanatical belief which is not based upon, upon evidence, if you define that as a religion, then Stalinism was a religion, Hitlerism was a religion. Um, it, admittedly, it wasn't a supernatural religion in that case. Mm -hmm. They can be secular religions like that. Sorry? They, they could be secular religion like that, not connected with a, a well, religion? Well, yes, I mean, you, you could call them secular religion, but, 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 it, but it, it's, a, it's a belief ba based upon something other than evidence. Mm -hmm. yeah, Hitler believed that they have evidence that a race was superior yeah, to others. Yeah, it was false, I mean, uh -huh. yes. It was, it, was, it, was, it was just fanatical false evidence. Mm -hmm. And Stalin also believed that like, the, the history was going to the party yeah, and the communism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, these are, these are, these are, these are dangerous beliefs because, because they're 
they are, they are fanatical ideological beliefs which are, which are not founded in good evidence. Uh, and it's not dangerous to uh, believe that science is always right, but because science is evolving, uh, can be wrong, and yes, then be can, right again. Science can be wrong, and, and um, it, science pr progresses, actually, by, um, by, by falsifying things. Mm -hmm. um, but um, science is the best method we have for discovering the truth. And if there were a better method, it would become a part of science. Mm -hmm. uh, today, probably human rights are holy for, for, for many people in the world, or individual freedom, or democracy. Are those holy principles not just as irrational as religion? Well, that's interesting because, I mean, they, they are in a sense because they, they come from a sort of fundamental belief, belief in human rights. Um, as opposed to, for example, the rights of non-human animals. And mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you can argue with people about, and some moral philosophers do, about the premise that human suffering is what really matters and animal suffering doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, there, it is possible for, for the basic criteria of our, of our ethics and our values to change. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you talk about animal suffering? Are we, as human beings, being blind to the suffering we are inflicting? I think it's interesting most? historically to look back at, at two or three hundred years ago when um, slaves were not regarded as properly human and so they were, um, they were treated abominably. Um, and it's very hard for us to put ourselves back three hundred years and imagine what it was like to be so cruel, the way the slaves were transported in ships, lying row after row after row without moving. Um, we have to wonder what we are doing today, which might in the future be looked back upon with such horror. Do you think that in the future we will think of how we treat animals like well, slavery? I suspect so, yes. Mm -hmm. And should we, should we grant it rights to some animals, for example? I think it's very hard to argue against that. I think, uh, um, and some of the best moral philosophers are now suggesting that any sentient being so it would not include plants, not include creatures that have no nervous system, but mm -hmm. pain, I think as a biologist now, if you think what pain is actually for, it doesn't require great intellect to, to experience pain. Pain is a, a, a biological mechanism which has evolved to prevent da damage. So if an animal is wounded or does something that causes pain, you can think of it as a kind of warning, don't do that again, because next time it might kill you. Mm. Um, well, there's no reason to suppose you need intelligence in order to um, benefit from such a warning signal. In fact, you could say that the less intelligent the species is, the more pain they need in order to, um, to learn. And so they might actually have, be, have a heightened sensitivity to pain compared to us because we are intelligent and so we perhaps need only a small amount of pain mm -hmm. in order to discourage us from doing something in the future that has caused pain. Mm -hmm. um, why is you are an atheist, you are a militant atheist, uh, do you think that still in, in, in great part of the world atheists is such a bad label or a bad word? Yes, it's a bad label, especially in, in America. I don't know what, it, what it's like here. Um, in, 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 in America, notoriously, you can't get elected to high office if you say you're an atheist. Mm -hmm. um, in Britain you can, um, uh, uh, and I, I, it, it, it's, pro it's regarded as irrelevant, I think. Um, and this is because, in America, it's because people think you can't be a good person. I mean, this extraordinary idea that you need, you need religion in order, in order to be a good person. I was once on an American radio show where the people phone in and a man phoned in from Texas and said if he didn't believe in God, he'd go out and shoot his neighbor. And some people really believe that. Um, and I, I, I would like to live in a world where people don't believe that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, you have been a character for both uh, The Simpson and South Park. Uh, Sorry. Which is, you have been a character in The Simpson and um, South Park. I enjoyed The Simpsons. <laughs> um, I, I, I went to their studio in yeah. California and... Um, of course, I just did, did my voices, it's all cartoon, and so the, the actors playing Homer Simpson and Marge mm. look nothing like what I would imagine. <laughs> I mean, I, I could hear Homer's voice coming from this actor, but it, he didn't, it was, that was quite incongruous. Um, and I did my little piece with just my, my voice, and then they 
Uh, South Park is well has not a very elegant sense of humor. That's, that's, that, that, that episode. No, I mean it, it's, it's. I mean the, the, I've only seen the, the, the one episode that somebody sent me. I mean it, it's not proper satire at all because it's not satirizing something mm -hmm. that, that's, that, that's, that's real. It's just it's just trying to be trying to be scatological. Yeah, but there there there, there there's a, it's a plot about a war between two different groups of that's atheists yeah. uh, in the in the yeah. in a post-religious yeah. yeah. uh, world. Uh, is that a valid point that if everybody will be atheist, will be maybe a war between a, which are the, the a, right atheists? It's an interesting commentary on history that whenever a movement starts out, it tends to, to, to schism into, mm. into factions. Love beautifully satirized in Monty Python's Life of Brian, where, where one faction has the sandal and one faction mm. has the gourd, and, and they've split into follow the gourd, follow the, follow the sandal. That, that, that's a point worth satirizing. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, you have been in Chile, you have the, the, the opportunity to be in Antarctica and Punta Arenas. Uh, you see a replica of uh, Darwin's ship, no? In Punta Arenas? That was the high spot of, of uh -huh. our trip to, this, to, to the very far south of Chile, was to go and see a uh, replica of uh, the, the Beagle and, and also of, of Magellan's sh ship as well and other, other important, historically important vessels. That was wonderful. We also went to Easter Island mm. uh, and saw the Easter Island statues, which are amazing. Uh, and um, it's a, in many ways a tragic place, but it was... Um, very interesting to go there and spend four days there. Mm -hmm. that, like the, the status in, in Eastern Iceland and other, other um, example of people believing supernatural things and doing great... Well, it led them to these, these extraordinary um, efforts. I mean, the, mag the enormous amount of work mm -hmm. that went into both carving the statues, transporting them and erecting them. Only religion can do that to people, that's true. And do you think that's a good or a bad thing? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's not good for them. I mean, it, 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 they wasted their lives doing it, but, but it's very interesting for us. Richard Dawkins, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. Muchas gracias a ustedes por habernos acompañado en estos encuentros del futuro.